What's up guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today we're checking out the October 2018 Mondo Box. Welcome back guys. I said today we have the October 2018 Mondo Box. I recently reviewed their, I believe it was their August one they sent to me. They got such a huge influx of uh, new subscriptions from that. They said, hey, we want to send you some more of them. So this came to me from Mondobox free of charge for me to showcase the filaments. I've reviewed their service before. I think their service is good. I think they have a great price point, about $25 a box. So I am just reviewing the filaments in this box just as I do my monthly MakerBox videos. I don't know how long they're going to be sending me these, but I know at least I have this one that came in. So. I thank you to them. I will say right off the bat though, there was a problem with the coupon code. They couldn't quite get that to work out. So instead of offering the discount, since that didn't work, all new subscriptions through December 14th, 2018, get two extra samples. That means you're gonna get seven samples of filament, seven 20 meter samples of filament in the box, along with your first one also gives you the laser cut spool. And another thing that I'd mentioned it would be nice to have, and a lot of people actually wrote into them, they're gonna offer the laser cut spools as a purchase. So you get one free with your first box. If you wanna get a couple more, it'll only be a few bucks. You can add it to your order when you get your next subscription box and you have more of them come in. They're gonna add them as one-time purchase and they'll just include it in your monthly box, shave on shipping, things like that. But let's now get to the box and see what things are. So I kind of like that about this is that they use, it looks like spray paint and a stencil and just spray paint that right on there. The reason why I like that is because it shows you how small this company actually is. When I first started talking to the guys over at Mondo Box, I believe they were at 16 subscribers there of like first two or three months. It has greatly increased since then. I am super glad to see that. I love to see the competition in the sample filament arena because printed solid has theirs you because they have the maker box now you have the mono box now you have the alien 3d box so it shows you how small the company is and they're doing their best to save money because they're just starting out i do like that i would like to see their own boxes eventually but i fully understand can't do that until you get more subscribers so now that i have my stuff i have my unboxing knife so here we have a little card and it's the 3d pg mondo box and it's just a little hello and thank you card. Uh, this is their first themed Mondo box, which is very cool. He sent me the link. I will be sure to put the link down for the items to print out in the video description, so be sure to check out down there. Uh, there's a lot of information in here. Not gonna read it all to you guys, because that's just ludicrous. So let us see what is all in here. All right, so here's our five samples, and do 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 do. I dropped one. So we have their 3D PG sticker right there. Put that there, their sticker. Now, what they do, which is really, really interesting, and I'm surprised that he's still at a cost savings for this. None of these are small coins, but he prints every one of the filaments out in their little coin. So a little 3D PG coin, and on the back, there is an extruder extruding plastic. And it's for every filament that comes in. So I have five filaments. I have five samples here. The samples came out really good. This orange is nice. This white is very, very white. Whoa. And then we have this one, which I'm pretty sure is the glow in the dark. There's a very, very shiny black here. Not too bad. And then a uh, yellow, a very, very neon colored yellow. Not very neon. I mean, it's not like, uh, who was that, Priline. God, that film was even hard to take pictures of. Even to film it was hard. Not too bad. So we have those. And now let's take a look at the samples and the information on them. All right, so first up we have 3D Mars Black PLA. And if you're interested, I did review the 3D Mars White PLA, if you wanna check that up here. So this is a basic black PLA filament. Prints smoothly with rich color consistent throughout the spool. Can be used as everyday printing filament. Print specifications is PLA. Print speed 30 to 100 millimeters a second. Extrude temp 195 to 220. Bed 60 to 90 C. It is non-abrasive. It tells you the URL to buy it at. And yeah, so these are 20 meter spools and they have zip ties on them. 
I'm still not a big fan of those and I have told them about that. I do hope they can change that in the future. Twist ties are much, much better because for people like me, I don't use the entire spool normally. I like to just twist it back closed, uh, but I do like how they do fit well in the bag, but it's a lot of extra bag. But either way, that's the black. I thought that was an, an, a uh, very familiar looking orange. That's because it's Hatchbox Orange PLA, probably my favorite color of orange. It's one of the first filaments I ever bought. I printed, I can't even tell you how many kilograms of that filament I've printed over the years, but it is such an awesome filament. So I'm glad to see that in this and it's a great, great color. Prints really well. Uh, so Hatchbox PLA is known for their vibrant colors and smooth printing. Because the lower melting temperature, lack of warping makes this a great PLA for displays or household prints. Print specifications, it's PLA. 59 millimeters a second is the print speed. Extruder temperature 180 to 210. Bed temperature 0 to 60 C, and it is non abrasive. And again, it is just such a great looking color. All right, so we have from IC3D Industries White PLA. Compatible with nearly all FFF 3D printers, IC3D filament is extensively tested using various extruder designs and hot end styles made in the USA. Ooh, that was a tough one to read. Print specifications, it's PLA obviously, print settings 50 to 100 millimeters a second, extruder temp 200 to 240, so a little bit higher than like PLA or the uh, Hatchbox and the 3D Mars. Bed temperature 0 to 60 C and it is non-abrasive. And again, this is an extremely white, white filament. So that's very nice to see. Okay, so now we have CC Tree Glow in the Dark PLA and that's kind of what I thought this was. And it's a very off-white, almost grayish looking uh, print once it's printed and then when it glows, it should be very vibrant green. So this is a dark green glow in the dark PLA. Allow filament to charge up for a brighter green glow. Caution, some glow-in-the-dark filaments are abrasive. I wouldn't say some are, I would say all. Glow-in-the-dark filaments are abrasive. Handle them that way and you won't go wrong or print it with a brass nozzle and immediately replace it once you finish your print because it is going to ream it out and you're no longer gonna have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You might have a 0.5 millimeter nozzle now. It's too hard to tell, so if you are going to use it on a brass nozzle, have some spares, swap it out real quick, you're good to go. Print specifications, it's PLA. Print it from 150 to 100 millimeters a second. Extruder temp, 190 to 220. Bed temperature, zero to six C. I'm gonna say zero to 60 C, little typo there. Abrasive, it says question mark, question mark, question mark, maybe. I say yes. All right, so lastly, we have Maker Geeks Maker Series PLA. This is Sun Punch Yellow, it is a PLA using trademarked Indigo brand of PLA resin. Filament extrudes smoothly with low moisture absorption. Prints are high temp to prevent jamming. Made in the USA. So yeah, you're gonna print this a lot higher. We'll talk about that after this. Print specifications, it's PLA. Print settings, 30 to 100 milliliters a second. Extruder temp, 210 to 230. Bed temperature, zero to 60 C, and it is non-abrasive. So I normally print Maker Geeks PLA, their Maker Series PLA, at a minimum of 225 degrees on the nozzle. 230 ends up sometimes being better depending on the machine. Direct drive, 225. Bowden would probably be 230 for me as a starting point. Sometimes 235 even, if it's gonna be uh, a very detailed print, lots of prints, you're printing very fast. So you kinda have to play with it. I would probably do a temperature tower if I was you on this one, just to kinda be sure on uh, what exactly you are gonna be, um, just ensure you would have a good print, put it that way. So I will say I'm much more impressed with the stickers that are on this month's bags versus what it was on August. I can't talk for September, didn't see it, but they put a lot more thought into these. There's no uh, text running off, no uh, errors that I could see except for the temperature on the CC tree one saying zero to six or it said zero to 60. Other than that, much, much better step up in quality, at least when it comes to that. I know that's a little thing, but that's kind of what I'm here to, here to notice. That's why I'm sent these items to notice little things like that, see if the quality care is actually there. And again, these guys are very, very cognizant of what people are saying about, it, especially when they send a box out to someone like me who reviews hundreds of types of filaments. I've been reviewing MakerBox for over two years now. So I've, I've tested hundreds of types of filament and I look at the details when someone sends me something like this. So I'm glad that they're taking all these steps, what I consider in the right direction. And I can't wait to see how all of these print out. All right, so the Mondo Box prints came out 
pretty good. I got good results out of most all of them. Uh, I did have some issues with the CC Tree Glow in the Dark and the IC3D White. I had under extrusions in both of them. Now, luckily I caught the, well, sh not, not shortly after, but during the print, I caught the under extrusion in the Glow in the Dark and I was able to go ahead and reprint and I got a actual, a beautiful print off of it. And I had a very little bit of filament left. And after I did that, I then had done this print with the IC3D and I let it complete the whole way because I printed it overnight. It came back in the morning, saw the under extrusion, looked how much film I had left and I was like, you know what? I probably don't have enough to finish so I did not print a new coin but I'll at least show you what it looks like. But other than that, this filament did not perform very well. They were both printed on the exact same machine so I'm not quite sure what was going on with it, but this white did not perform as well as the glow in the dark or even the um, hatchbox orange that was also printed on the same machine. So I want to get a close in look at these and I'll show you guys the results. So I'll start right off first with the IC3D white PLA. And looking from the top, it looks like a fantastic print. It really does. But when you flip it over, it's a totally different story. So it did very, very poorly on these first few layers. This is printed on the uh, GTEC A10, very poorly on those. First layer was good, but then just where the support was meeting it, it just had, had a bad day. Over the support, it didn't do a very good job. And then I had the under extrusion up in here. So as you can see, it was actually kind of a few layers that went down, not so great. Uh, I was surprised I was actually able to recover and continue printing, but it just had a bad day. And then it peeled up here on the center where the F and T come together here, this uh, had started to peel up a little bit off of the super plate. So yeah, overall, this just, maybe I just need to change my settings on it, but like as a standard PLA, I can print most PLAs pretty easily. This just did not work out very well. So I was very uh, displeased with this. The opposite of displeased is very pleased. And that is the Hatchbox Orange PLA. This has been one of my favorite filaments since I first started 3D printing. It actually was the very first roll I ever purchased in order to 3D print objects. And this came out absolutely amazing. This was also printed on my GTEC A10 using my uh, Slicer Prusa Edition uh, slight, uh, profile and the uh, new firmware on it and it just prints absolutely gorgeous. No under extrusions, bottom layers were good. Over the support did a great job because then you can see again the support I'm not a big fan of leaves this little bit. Just got to take a knife and just cut off that last little bit there. It comes off easily but it leaves a little bit left behind where Simplify 3D does not. But yeah, that first layer off the super plate you get that, that checker pattern in there. That looks fantastic. Top layers filled in very nicely. It's just super clean print. I'm really, really happy with this. You know, every time I, pr I print this out with this filament, I am not disappointed at all. All right, and here I have the 3D Mars Black PLA. I actually reviewed the 3D Mars White PLA quite a long time ago, and it printed out great. Uh, the interesting thing about them is that it's a 1.2 kilogram roll versus the normal one kilogram roll that you get from other companies. So that's kind of like one of the big things for them. But top layers, you can see it's super shiny. They all filled in great. This was printed on the Anycubic i3 Mega. It did pretty good over the supports. You know, no real issues there. The supports came off fairly easily. Simplify 3D. First layers on the Ultra Base, again, has a very nice look to it. And over the cogs, it did a very good job as well. As you can see, they're all rounded. There's no like big flat parts where that's where it has a problem with the cooling. But yeah, this is a very clean print, no stringing. So again, another great PLA print. All right, and here we have the Maker Series PLA. This is a Sun Punch Yellow PLA. Again, from Maker Geeks, a very, very vibrant color. Printed pretty good. Uh, this was printed on my Prusa i3 Mark III. And it, it did peel up a little bit on here. I was using the powder coated PEI sheet, which you can't really tell, but it this definitely has there. You can tell a little bit there. You can see the texture in the bottom layer. So that's how you can tell. But yeah, it did peel up right here. You can see that. The supports did a pretty good job over top where the supports were. You know, it did a very good job there. No problems there. A little bit of stringing in there. I did print this a little hotter like I normally do on my other machines, but which was uh, 230 degrees Fahrenheit. I should have pulled it down to maybe around like 222, 225, somewhere around there. I think that would have been a little bit better. But yeah, overall, it did do a pretty good job. There was some black 
throughout the print, and I don't know what that's from. I haven't printed black filament on that for a while, so maybe something was stuck up in the throat, or maybe it was on the nozzle, even though I keep the nozzle really clean and it has a sock on it. But you can see there was some black filament in there, black, you know, even down there, you can see it's a few layers in some of these. Uh, there was some type of contaminant going on there, so I don't know what that was but still overall, it was a pretty good print. As I said, we have the CC Tree Glow in the Dark PLA, which we're gonna illuminate this here shortly. But look at that, super clean print. This was printed on the GTEC A10, again with the Slicer Prusa Edition profile. And I also went ahead and put on my old uh, micro Swiss nozzle that came off of my old GTEC printer. It went onto this machine so I could print this abrasive style filament. Over the supports, you did a great job, great first layer, and you can see the supports kind of stuck on there just a little bit. And yeah, there's no under extrusions in this one, but this one here did have a pretty fair under extrusion in there. I saw it and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stop this and restart printing. But it does a really good job filling in well, like it's a good sturdy print. You know, the quality is pretty good. But yeah, so let's charge this up and see what it looks like. All right, here's after letting it charge for about three minutes underneath a fluorescent light kind of just stuck it up in the ceiling. And uh, so yeah, it does glow pretty good, but you gotta let it really charge. That flashlight wasn't doing enough for it. But yeah, this ended up turning out pretty good, I think. So overall, not bad prints. You know, the, the IC3D, not so great. Uh, didn't work out just as well as I hoped. A lot of issues going on with that. Not sure what any of that was about. Uh, but a lot of people recommend IC3D. Like, uh, I know Midnight Giant exclusively loses, uses them. I think they sponsor his, a lot of his builds and he gets fantastic prints using it. So maybe it's just a settings thing. Uh, they're a little bit different. It's also white. White sometimes has a little bit different properties, but I've got a roll of white on the TiVo Tornado on different filament and it's printing out flawlessly. So I don't know what it is, but it's a pretty good uh, selection of filaments. You know, this is all PLAs. This was their October box. So a lot of it was more themed in the colors for October. Mine just a little bit gets to me a little bit later. That's why this video is a little bit later. So if you guys wanna check out the Mondo box, I'll put a link down below. You guys can go ahead and check them out. If you sign up between now and I believe it's uh, the first week of January, you're gonna get two extra samples. And they're doing that because they had issues with the coupon code working out for them just in the system that they're currently using. It's not working out correctly to do a discount code. So instead they decided to offer up an additional two uh, segments of 20 millimeter sample filaments. Not too bad. So if you guys want to check that out, there'll be some links down below and you can go ahead and do that. That's it guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk to me in the comments down below. Either way, I want to hear from you guys what you guys think about the Mondo box or how I do these videos. If you guys want to stay tuned what's going on in the middle, there's a big subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that. Hit the bell icon. That way you get a new notification or you'll get a push notification on your phone, mobile device when I upload new content or do a live stream. If you want to support me financially, down below me is a Patreon link. Donate a dollar more and that way you guys get access to my Patreon feed and you get access to my after show, which I produce almost after all of my videos. And that's a little bit extra about what I'm working on, projects going on, a little bit of background about me personally, which I don't really share anywhere else except through Patreon. So I thank my current patrons for being a part of that. If you guys wanna do any one-time donations or Streamlabs, buy me a coffee video description, or there's also a bunch of fill links down there and a bunch of coupon codes you guys can check out, save some money. A little slice of what you buy with those comes back here to help me out the channel. So thank you guys for watching. Till next time, happy printing.